Good Tuesday evening and welcome to the NCW Life Evening News. I'm Grant Olson. Before we get to tonight's top stories, let's head outside and take a look outside our weather window. And we thought it would get a little bit warmer than it did this afternoon with the cloud cover just a little bit thicker also than we thought it would be today. But all in all, not a bad Tuesday afternoon today as we look down at the Wenatchee Valley from our cross camera up on Wenatchee Heights. Let's take a look ahead now as we get through the rest of this week, today and tomorrow. It'll be nice. In fact, we're going to see warmer weather on both Wednesday and into Thursday, and then things are going to get wetter and cooler beginning Thursday night and lasting right through Sunday. And as we take a look ahead, even past the next five days, here's our June outlook. And as far as temperatures go, it looks like we're going to be about normal here in north central Washington. Precipitation outlook on your right also just about normal. And we'll have much more weather for you coming up a little bit later on. Now a few of the news stories we're following for you tonight. The two-vehicle accident Friday afternoon on Highway 97 near Riverside has now claimed a second life. The 20-year-old California man who stole an estimated $25,000 from Kashmir Valley Bank ATMs must serve 30 days in jail and repay the losses. And Douglas County Commissioners take a vote on the Wilkinson Apartment Super Complex in East Wenatchee. But first, our top story tonight, an Eastmont Junior High student was arrested yesterday after allegedly making social media threats that involved causing harm to the school during lunchtime and included a picture of a firearm. The East Wenatchee Police Department said concerned students alerted school administration to the posts on Instagram and Snapchat. The student was arrested on felony harassment charges and booked into the Chelan County Juvenile Detention Center. Police said they were called to the school Monday by administrators who feared the student might be on campus. The student, however, was at home where he was arrested. Police say they traced the username on the Instagram account to that student. The two-vehicle accident Friday afternoon on Highway 97 near Riverside has now claimed a second life. The Washington State Patrol said Lorena Gonzalez Martinez died at the scene in the 2.30 p.m. accident. She was a passenger in a vehicle driven by 28-year-old Gabriela Harrison Garcia of Loomis. Late yesterday afternoon, Garcia died from her injuries at Central Washington Hospital. The State Patrol said Garcia lost control over southbound 2014 Chevy Camaro, which crossed the center line and struck a northbound 2015 GMC Sierra, which was being driven by 37-year-old Joshua Brown, also of Loomis. The State Patrol said Brown drove onto the shoulder, attempting to avoid a collision, but the right front corner of Garcia's vehicle hit the left front corner of his Sierra, sending him into the ditch and the Camaro into the center of the highway. Garcia was airlifted to Central Washington Hospital in Wenatchee, where she later died, and Brown taken to Mid Valley Hospital in Omak with undisclosed injuries. The accident closed the highway for about three hours and 45 minutes with no detour. The state patrol said neither Martinez nor Garcia were wearing seat belts. In other news, Fabio Chichiu, the 20-year-old California man who stole an estimated $25,000 from Kashmir Valley Bank ATMs, must now serve 30 days in jail and repay the losses. He's already repaid $10,000 toward his restitution. Police arrested Chichiu last summer in Placentia and ex extradited him to Washington for using fraudulent ATM cards at local cash machines. The phony cards were created using data stolen by a device called a card skimmer. On Monday, he pleaded guilty to one count of first degree theft plus six counts of identity theft. As a first time offender, he was given a lesser sentence by visiting judge Robert Grimm. The plea agreement also resolves similar card skimming charges against Chichiu that he faced for other ATM thefts in Kitsap County. He must report to the Chelan County Jail by August 31st. A 290-unit apartment complex just outside East Wenatchee has the seal of approval from Douglas County Commissioners. The three-member board voted unanimously to allow development of Canyon Ridge townhomes proposed by the Wilkinson Corporation of Yakima. 
Neighbors in the 5th and Lyle area have opposed the project amid concerns over traffic, safety, and wildfire vulnerability. But commissioners said all those issues appear to have been answered in the developer's plans. Commissioner Dan Sutton said develops like this are the best answer to the Wenatchee Valley housing crisis. One of the changes that alarms me is that our children or perhaps your grandchildren can't stay in Wenatchee because they can't find a place to live. You've got kids that you would love to stay in home they're in the valley and be part of your family. And they end up having to move to Spokane, Seattle, Tri-Cities, North Carolina, wherever it may be, because the average home price in this valley is $500,000. And newlyweds and new kids starting families can't get that kind of money together. They can't get the financing for it. And the only way to improve our living conditions in this valley is to increase bed inventory, to have places for people to live. When we come back, a cool spring means slow melting of mountain snowpack, and that means Lake Chelan has been slow to refill. Chelan County Commissioners say their jail won't be used as a work release center for the State Department of Corrections. A former member of the Eastmont School Board has been appointed to fill a, vacation, a vacant position on the board. And a team member with the North Central Educational Service District has won a statewide award for her efforts. I'm Grant Olson and you're watching the NCW Life Evening News. At DA Davidson in Wenatchee, they believe your investment success begins with a personalized plan. A plan that is the roadmap you need to navigate your way to living your best years in retirement. DA Davidson can help you create a plan so you can take the time to enjoy the finer things in life. Let the financial advisors at DA Davidson help chart your retirement future today. Blue Lagoon Pool and Spa has hot tubs in stock now. Spas are scientifically proven to improve sleep and ease arthritis pain. Let us help you find the perfect spa today. Blue Lagoon Pool and Spa is helping families reconnect one hot tub at a time. The Lake Chelan Rotary Club invites you to experience the newly expanded Cycle Chelan held June 25th, 2022. Pick your thrill from four rides, the Century Challenge, Cycle Divino, the Lake Loop, or the Butte Blast. All profits from Cycle Chelan are used to support student scholarships of the Lake Chelan Rotary Club. Cycle Chelan 2022, pick your thrill today. Welcome back. In another news, a cool spring means slow melting of mountain snowpack, and that means Lake Chelan has been slow to refill. The lake is about three feet below its full level. As a result, the Chelan County PUD shut down generation at its Lake Chelan Dam on May 13th to water in the basin rather than spilling it to create hydroelectric power. The utility says once Lake Chelan reaches its target of 1,094 foot depth, generation may start again. The hope is the lake will be full again by June 1st. Chelan County Commissioners say their jail won't be used as a work release center for the State Department of Corrections. DOC has been seeking a Wenatchee site where prison inmates would begin their reintroduction to society. The Regional Justice Center Annex was one proposed location along with the former Deaconess Hospital building, but County Board Chairman Kevin Overbay said the DOC has failed to communicate with the county about the project and there are other renovations that need to go forward at the Annex. I feel it's in the best interest of Schlein County and its citizens for us to terminate and withdraw our um, request to DOC. To, uh, to provide a space for work release and basically utilize the annex for the purpose of fulfilling the needs for uh, folks that work inside the correctional facility. 
considering they have not contacted us, uh, either Kathy or myself, since November of uh, mm -hmm. 2021. And since we had given a June 1 deadline at that time, um, it's not reasonable to think that in the next eight days we'd be able to reach a uh, agreement on mm -hmm. a contract and or uh, an agreement for a long-term um, uh, construction. A former member of the Eastmont School Board has been appointed to fill a vacant position on that board. The board yesterday appointed Stephen Piccarillo to serve through next year when an election will be held to fill the remaining time on former board member Joy Dawes' term. Shortly after being elected in November, Daw announced she would be moving out of the area. Piccarillo, a former Seattle police officer, was a board member from 2011 to 2019. He was one of five finalists for the position who were interviewed by the school board on Monday. Well, a team member with the North Central Educational Service District has won a statewide award for her efforts. Tricia Schock, Executive Director of Administrative Services for the NCSD, was awarded the John Jempt Outstanding Service to K-12 Education Award during the May 5th Annual Conference of Washington Association of School Business Officials. Shock joined the NCESD in 2014. Before that, she was Director of Accounting for Cascade Medical Center in Leavenworth. The John Jempt Award recognizes significant service, good moral character, and professional integrity among Washington school business executives. Congratulations. You're watching the NCW Life Evening News. Coming up next, tonight's feature story and your complete local weather forecast. That and much more still to come on the NCW Life Evening News. Please stay with us. Spring is more than just a time to clean. It's your time to renew, recharge, and spend time with the people you love. At Mary Mates, our cleaning services go beyond the basic services and provide you with a comprehensive clean that will re-energize your home and enhance your life. From everyday routine cleaning or deep cleanings, Mary Mates professional team members can provide you with an unrivaled experience. Call Mary Mates to schedule your cleaning today. What is home? A place to gather, a place to grow, provide shelter for the ones we love, eat, drink, restore, build trust. It's a place to rest when the work day is done, a place to find quiet after a night of good fun. What an honor we have at Guild to help own, finance, create, pave the way to live in home. Welcome back to the NCW Life Evening News. In tonight's feature story, not everyone gets to see inside the Wenatchee Valley Humane Society's clinic, so the agency decided to host a private video tour of the facility. The clinic has been open for about a year with Dr. Radha Ganesan as lead veterinarian. The facility provides spay and neuter services, plus other medical care and shelter animals and income qualified pets. This is where we basically, um, this is where we sedate our animals for surgery and we go ahead to prep them as well. So I can give you guys a little walk through. Okay. This is our wet table where we perform dentals for the, currently we're only performing dentals for our shelter population. These are our prep tables for surgery. Back there is our surgical pack station. Um, you'll see that on, basically the prep area is the center of the clinic and all the rooms kind of sit around the prep area, so I'll give you guys a tour. This is our cat recovery room. This is where cats come in for surgery and they recover here after surgery as well. So we have some friends here today. Just waiting for surgery. Here is our uh, small dog recovery room. So 
in here what typically will house dogs that are under 20 pounds. Um, and any dogs that are a little bit bigger will go in our large dog recovery room. Today we actually have quite a few guests um, in the large dog recovery room. So these guys are all waiting for spay neuter surgery today. Everyone's brought over first thing in the morning and we like to get surgery done um, in the morning between the hours of 8 a.m. and 12.30. This is our lab area right here. Um, we're able to perform minimum diagnostics here, such as blood work, um, run fecals, and we typically tend to send everything else out to our reference laboratory. Um, and, but we perform diagnostics at, on an as-needed basis here. This is our surgical pack station. So typically we actually have um, a volunteer stationed here while we're in surgery, washing instruments for us and packing surgery packs. We have a, a great volunteer base here in the clinic um, and we really love our volunteers. <laughs> Here we have our Pride and Joy, our surgical suite. We're fortunate enough to have four surgical tables in here as well as four surgery lights. Um, currently we're really using these middle two tables and our goals right now are to achieve high quality, high volume spay neuter um, status. So we are really working on improving our quality of surgery as well as our efficiency during surgery. We really love this room because it enables us the ability to perform x-rays on any emergencies that are brought to us by animal care and control um, and imaging for our shelter population as well. It definitely eases things for us to be able to do in-house imaging. All right, time now to take a look at your North Central Washington weather forecast. Hope you all had a great Tuesday weather. It was on the cloudy side today, and we saw a lot of that from this morning right through our afternoon hours. Temperatures not bad, but not quite as warm as we thought they'd get today. 68, our unofficial high temperature at the airport today. 74 is our normal high for this time of year. 48, our low this morning. 51 is our normal low. Record high, 90 degrees in 2001. Record low 35 in 1975. Sunrise this morning 514 and sets for us tonight at 842. Tomorrow's temperature is going to be warmer than today mainly because less cloudiness as we get you into your Wednesday 78 almost 80 in Moses Lake tomorrow 77s for Afreda and Quincy 75 in Wenatchee 73 in Leavenworth and a beautiful 75 degrees as well up in Lake Chelan. Tonight mostly cloudy skies area of low pressure is fighting with this area of high pressure, it is pushing it down somewhat, so that's allowing those clouds to move in on us. Very mild tonight with lows in the low 50s. For Wednesday, a little bit better, as I mentioned, just partly cloudy skies. It will be warmer with high temperatures in the mid-70s. Getting into Thursday, this is where our forecast changes a bit. Mostly cloudy, showers will be possible, not so much during the day, but as we move into the evening hours, we will see some shower activity. Mild once again, though, in the mid 70s. After some morning showers on Friday, we could see some breezy conditions. Notice the lines of pressure very tightly packed. That's going to usher in some cooler weather too. upper 60s for your high on Friday. For Saturday, it looks like it could be a wet one, mostly cloudy, a 40% chance of rain and cooler with highs mid to upper 60s for Saturday. Getting you heavy now into your Memorial Day weekend on Sunday. Morning rain showers, I think we'll stay on the cloudy side in the afternoon. Not so showery, I don't think, in our afternoon hours, but it will be cooler. High temperatures Sunday only in the mid-60s. That'll be about 10 degrees below normal. And then your Memorial Day Monday weather. Partly cloudy skies. Here's our ridge back up and over the Pacific Northwest. We'll see high temperatures on Monday right around 70 degrees. Taking a look at that seven-day forecast. 53 overnight tonight. Beautiful tomorrow and into Thursday mid 70s mid 50s for low late evening showers Thursday better chance for rain Friday Saturday and into Sunday morning we'll see a cool down over our Memorial Day weekend as well and then as we get you into the final day of our forecast Memorial Day partly cloudy skies and warmer with high temperatures then of 71 and that's a look at your local weather forecast coming up next tonight sports report with Eric Grandstrom and more as the NCW life evening news continues right after this. The best pizza in the known universe is right here in downtown Chelan, so come on up. For the best locally crafted beer and barbecue in Chelan, come on up. 
For the best down-home scratch country cooking in North Central Washington, you'll find it in Manson. Come on up. Come on up. Come on up. Come on up. Traditional values and innovation in honoring the life of each family we serve is part of the ministry of Heritage Memorial Chapel. Our staff is committed to walk with your family with compassion through this time of grief. We are here to help and here to serve the right kind of help when you need it most. Heritage Memorial Chapel. It's a sports update on the NCW Life Channel. And a happy Tuesday to you. The Mariners hit three home runs and held on to beat Oakland in Seattle last night by a final of 7-6. to six. The long balls came off the bats of Cal Raleigh, Julio Rodriguez, and Eugenio Suarez. It was the first for Rodriguez at T-Mobile Park and, incredibly, the fourth home run for Raleigh this season. He only has six hits. High fly ball, the opposite way, out to right field, Julio tagged it, gone! Home run! His first in Seattle! It's a go-ahead three-run blast! You want to talk some oppo power! All the way down the left field line. That one is hit high and deep down that left field line, and that baby is gone. Pinder second level right down the line and it's three to one Elvis runs balls hit the shallow left field this may work and it will Bethancourt scores Elvis Andrus to third Kemp's hit has tied this game at three first pitch to Cal Raleigh he swings and lashes this down the line down by the pole it's a fair ball it's a home run <laughs> Take the lead right back. It's 5-3 Mariners. Out to left. Kemp watching. Turning. Gone. Home run. Number nine for Suarez. And the Mariners are teeing off. Uh, Jack Logue tonight. It's their third home run. Squibber. Easy play for France. He'll walk to the bag. And the Mariners take game one against the A's. And how about the day at the plate by Julio Rodriguez? Every single time we see this guy, he just gets better and better. And I remember this before, like when you see these games where it's Diego, or excuse me, where it's Julio that's getting it together, and Cal, you realize that the next wave is here, and they're performing at a really high level right now. Seattle and Oakland battle again tonight, 6.40 the start time. George Kirby getting his second start of his young career at home. Well, uh, checking the rest of the Les Schwab American League West scoreboard last night, Jose Ramirez had a two-run homer and drove in four for Cleveland in a 6-1 win, uh, win over Houston. The Astros' lead in the West is a game over the Angels. Texas sits in third, seven and a half games back. Seattle's nine games out at 18-25. and 25. Oakland brings up the bottom of the American League West. Well, we are just 10 days away from a new season of baseball for the Wenatchee Apple Sox. Wenatchee opens the season a week from Friday for the first of a three-game set at Ben. Their home opener is June 6th against Port Angeles. Voice of the Apple Sox, Joel Norman, says they've been doing a lot to prepare for what they hope is a normal season at the ballpark. It's been a funky off-season to start with. We switched offices. We moved right next door. So right now, if you come into our new office, there's boxes everywhere. So we're in the middle of trying to move in that sense and also prepare for a baseball season. So it's been a hectic spring, but it's been a lot of fun. This is our favorite time of the year, this anticipation. It's going out, you know, double-checking everything with sponsors to make sure everything's set, chatting with fans, making sure, we, you know, we're selling the season tickets as well. But uh, we think this is going to be a really fun year because I think like the rest of the world, as we kind of just experience with Apple Blossom, things are styling finally starting to feel normal again. And I think that's what we're most excited about this baseball season. Uh, 
We had a lot of things we had to do last year to meet just league and state requirements. We felt we did the best of our ability. We understand there was frustration with that, but you know this year is going to be perfectly normal, back to what you're used to in the summer with the Apple Sox. And, and hopefully here this weather is going to cooperate. We were talking about that right when we got here, Dan. Eventually it's going to warm up and we're going to have some great summer nights at Paul Thomas Senior Stadium. Now, not only did the Apple Sox move their offices, but they also moved on to a new head coach in Mitch Darlington, athletic director at Mansfield High School. He's just a really friendly guy who he's, he's fired up for this season. I, just from every conversation with him, he had been coaching some junior college baseball at Big Ben, kind of stepped away. He's been the athletic director up at Mansfield for the last few years, and he just kind of realized last year he wanted to get back into coaching. And for us, just the interview process, he was a natural fit. I'm thrilled to see what he's going to bring because every day he's talking about the season, telling us about roster updates, questions for us about things. His curiosity and enthusiasm are the things that fans are going to notice him about immediately. I think they're going to be really proud to have him as a head coach. Well, Nancy, we'll see a few familiar faces off of last year's squad, but feature quite a number of new names and faces. Norman invites fans to come out to the Fan Fest on June 2nd to get to meet this summer's ball club. June 2nd is our free Fan Fest. It's from 5 to 7 p.m. When fans will arrive here, the Apple Sox will be practicing on the field. It's going to be your first time to see them in any action. And frankly, it's fun to watch them practice at all. There aren't many of those over the course of the summer with games every day. So that's a fun opportunity for fans. And then once they're done, they'll kind of come up and chat with their fans. A lot of times it's kind of still getting to know your host families, but it's other people getting to meet them. And it's always nice to see the kids kind of first getting a chance to meet the players as well. So that's going to be a lot of fun. And we mentioned a chance to pick up season tickets as well, chance to purchase season tickets as well. We're going to have free food on hand as well. It's just that first welcome back to the ballpark night. And that's why we make it free. We want to remind you, you know, hey, this is what summer's all about right here. And it's going to be a lot of fun. We do that, and the next day they're on the road. So it's kind of a way to kick off the season and wish them well before they hit the road. If you'd like more information on FanFest or the Apple Sox, go online to applesox.com. We'll be televising five Apple Sox games this summer here on the NCW Life Channel, beginning with our first game June 17th against Bellingham. Well, golfers from throughout North Central Washington began play this morning at various sites for the WIAA State Golf Tournaments. The 4A Boys Tournaments being held in uh, Indian Summer Country Club at Olympia. We'll be watching Wenatchee's Carson Huffaker, Max Yount, Ashton Holcomb, Ben Gordon, and Jackson Bishop, as well as Eastmont's Cal Anderson and Quentin Ward, and Moses Lake's Caden Goobler. The girls' 4A tournament is at Hawks Prairie Golf Course in Lacey. Teeing off this morning were Wenatchee's Ashley Willoughby, J.C. Mubre, Sienna Kaufman, Lily Mubre, and Ellen Kilbeck. Also, uh, we'll keep an eye on Eastmont's Lily Weigel, Lane Schmoltzler, and Chloe Roberts. The Afraid of Boys are in Olympia playing Capital City Golf Club. The Tigers are represented by Max Hewitt, Kenji Pickerel, uh, Koa McWilliams, and Carter Burns, as well as Mason Moore. The Afraid of Girls team has Jamie Dwight and Logan Pickerel. They're participating in the t State 2A tournament. That's at Tumwater Valley Golf Club. State 1A tournament for both boys and girls is today at Indian Canyon Golf Course in Spokane. Shalans Joey Gas and Carson Clinton are playing as well as Arabelle Finch for the Goats. Quincy has Emily Whirl and Julissa Trevino representing the Jackrabbits. Deer Park Golf Club is the site for the 1B2B tournament. Golfers will be following include for the boys Oroville's Will Morrow, Kane Booker and Finn Kenner and Okanagan's Riley Moore and Darton Wood. For the girls, Waterville Mansfield's Peyton Dunning, Alexa Garcia and Macy Corey. That's a look at sports news. I'm Eric Grandstrom. Grant, back to you. Thanks a bunch, Eric. And now let's check in with Dan Koontz for a look at what's coming up tomorrow morning on Wake Up Wenatchee Valley. Dan? Thanks, Grant. Tomorrow is Wednesday. Winning Wednesday returns. Uh, I'll be giving away some kind of cool prize to one lucky viewer of Wake Up Wenatchee Valley. Don't miss that. Winning Wednesday tomorrow. And I'm going to consult the Magic 8-Ball. Tomorrow, Wednesday's Wake Up Wenatchee Valley will be... I can't read it. Without a doubt. So I'll be here. Can't go wrong with the Magic 8-Ball. Hasn't let me down yet. I'll see you tomorrow at 7 a.m. live and local. Grant, back to you. Dan, thank you. And that's going to do it for our newscast tonight. For more on these stories and other news from around North Central Washington, you can find us on Facebook or our website at ncwlife.com. And remember, if you see news happening, we'd like to hear from you. You can send us an email at news at ncwlife.com or give us a call at 888-6295. I'm Grant Olson. Thanks for joining us and have a great night.
It has really um, been a great partnership between Succession and NCW Life. It's not always easy to sit in front of a, a camera or a, a microphone, but um, you guys have made it a really nice process.